Now, the latest figures showing just how many Europeans are going to fight in Syria and Iraq present a sobering insight into just how serious the problem has actually become in recent months. Uh, security services estimate that up to 1,000 young British residents have joined the jihadist fight in the Middle East. Also, up to 250 hardliners are believed to have returned to the UK, ultimately posing a massive headache for security and police. In fact, this new terror threat has left the authorities to wonder just how much the official policy of multiculturalism could be to blame. Let's get this report now with RT's Marina Kosareva. Multiculturalism was once celebrated as the way forward. But after 30 years of cultivating it in Britain, it's now been blamed for fostering extremist ideology and directly contributing to homegrown Islamic terror. For too long, the doctrine of multiculturalism has led to immigrants establishing completely separate communities in our cities. This has led to honor killings, female genital circumcision, and the establishment of Sharia law in inner city pockets throughout the UK. Islamic radicals should be challenged with the values of liberal democracy. That's a, a wider issue to do with multiculturalism in, in Britain, which I think has led to ghettoization, a sort of bottom-up apartheid that has occurred. I think, unfortunately, that it, it, it is, there is going to be an extent of, of too little too late. British police are now preparing for raids across the country in their bid to find out exactly who is Jihadi John, the British suspect thought to have beheaded American journalist James Foley. But many fear there is more than one Jihadi John around and want the government to take more drastic measures. Therefore, an automatic suspicion that if you have travelled to uh, the ISIS region in this period of time, um, that you are in some way involved in, in the conflict there. And I think that, 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 that it's only right that that suspicion exists. Um, and I think all of those individuals that have uh, travelled to the region need to be investigated uh, by the intelligence services and quite possibly by the police if they return. The Home Secretary currently has the power to strip citizenship from dual nationals who are fighting abroad. This also applies to immigrants who have become naturalized citizens. But Home Office lawyers argue that a country can't make its citizens stateless. And the other side of the story is Muslim communities living here in the UK who say the threat of violence has increased extreme nationalism and xenophobia. They say being made into scapegoats has changed their everyday lives dramatically. So I'm, I'm quite sickened by the political right who constantly have a go at multiculturalism as if multiculturalism is the major problem. We are getting a gradual sense of, of a drip drip of cases which comes in from the Trojan horse affair. We had cases that came in from the ISIS affair they feel that there's a sense of collective guilt that is being placed on them, not just by individuals that they know, but also through the national papers uh, and by politicians who are calling out that all Muslims should answer for this. This so-called hate campaign is seen mostly on the Internet, with innocent Muslims being the frequent target of Internet trolls. Even a senior Muslim member of a local branch of the anti-immigration UKIP party has found himself the target of online abuse. There's a sense of disaffection, there's a sense um, of uh, isolationism and I guess there's also a sense that you know some of the individuals feeling that this is also prejudicial in its own right by assuming all of the Muslim community has to answer for something they have absolutely no control over. The war of extremism is now raging just as much as that of nationalism. The problem for the government is finding a fine line, so it doesn't end up falling into either camp. Marina Kostova reporting from London for RT.